hello guys welcome back to my channel my name is kende aderi big bay aka the mommy champs and if this is your first time here you are absolutely welcome anyway today's video is going to be like a story time such testimony video and i'm going to be sharing with you guys how i had to travel with my kids through new york amid covid19 yes you guys heard me right new york the bane of coronavirus in the United States of America. But before we go right into the video, please click the subscribe button so that all my videos can get to you guys and hit that bell icon you see right beside it so that you guys can get notified when a new video comes up. Where do I even start from? Okay, so for those of you that don't know, I had my baby girl in the United States of America yes and so I had to leave Nigeria um, last year November with my mom and my twins because there was no way I was going to leave my twins here in Nigeria so I had to go with them and we had to leave in November because my due date was slated for December slash January so I had to be there on time you know to just settle in properly and go about my daily business so on getting to the US we we're able to settle down quickly and I went about my business of um, going for my antenatal shopping for baby girls arrival and I had to homeschool the twins yes I honestly cannot be more thankful for that opportunity because I didn't know God was actually preparing me for a time as this like I didn't know there was going to be a pandemic that will actually force parents to stay home and homeschool their kids gosh it was not easy so when I see parents now you know grumble about homeschooling I just sit that with my cold bottle of Zobo just my shoulders like a pro and giggle <laughs> because honestly I have been in that shoe and it is not easy at all but a parents gotta do what they gotta do yeah so I had to homeschool them because they were going to be away from school for a very long time and I didn't want them to be far behind you know I still wanted them to keep up with school work and all of that so that was why I had to do that but really I must commend all teachers out there you guys are the real MVP like you guys are superheroes I saying God bless you all that's all I can say right now God bless you for all that you do so fast forward to the 13th of January I had my baby girl and everything went on as planned like our arrival was a cruise she latched on properly a hospital visit to the pediatrician was always a good one taking care of her came with no additional stress thanks to my mom and a calm spirit anyways and you know her sleep pattern wasn't as bad as you know how I expected it to be getting her birth certificate and a passport was a very fast one like everything just worked out in our favor in fact you know that fussy period they say babies experience in their first months yes she just experienced hers for like I think three or four days and that was it like I was really excited you know because watching the twins back then you know call up like worms and you know feel the discomfort was a very sad one but she just experienced hers for three days and I was very very happy about that so by the end of February we're done with everything we needed to do but we couldn't leave because we already had a return ticket back to Nigeria for the 20th of March which actually turned out to be a blessing because she was slated for her two months vaccine on the 19th of March so we're just on a chilling pee that the champs came in for two weeks as well we had great family time together little did I know that the devil was about to rear its ugly head fast forward to the weekend before the week we were meant to travel mm -hmm. do you like that right Anyways, that's how our amazing hosts came back from work that certain Friday night with loads of food that could actually last for a whole year. And I was confused. I had to ask questions. I was going on. Why did you guys do so much grocery shopping? And they were like, coronavirus has entered Delaware. And I said, okay, Lobaton. Not like we didn't know that coronavirus was in the US then. It was, but it was not in Delaware. Delaware had not yet experienced any case of coronavirus so everybody could still go about their daily business people could still go out to shop people could still go to church people could still people could still go to worship children could still go to school and people could still go to work you know without having to be scared of this deadly virus so that explained why they had to do the panic buying because um, stores were already running out of supplies and you know so now later there will be restrictions and everybody will have to stay home guys I became very very worried 
why because one i see her to take my baby girl for her vaccinations on the 19th of march to the hospital which was considered as a high risk area and two i have to travel back to nigeria on the 20th through the airport another high risk area with my kids i was like why now of all times like not with my kids like a lot of thoughts and emotions just kept running through my mind like how will i control my kids at the airport how will i stop them from touching stuff you know how kids are kids cannot be still in a place they want to touch everything they want to explore everywhere they want to run around and you know with the way this um, virus is you can't just touch anything because you don't even know if somebody has sneezed on that particular thing the child is touching like guys i was I was numb for a whole while like how will I try to quickly move my kids away when somebody accidentally sneezes how will I explain what coronavirus is to them like how would they really understand what they are actually meant to do how will I get them to be calm in the plane you know and just be still without getting infected with coronavirus like how would we be able to sit down with loads of people coming from different parts of the world in the plane you know, we don't even know what everyone is carrying in their bodies and here we are about to board flights with people that we don't even know if they have coronavirus or not, guys. I was really, really scared. And talking about immunity, how immune am I? Look at my kids, like, how immune are they? Look at my newborn, newborn. How much immunity does she have in her body that will prevent her from getting coronavirus, guys? I was too scared but I just said a prayer that night and just went to bed so the following day I was okay because I prayed and I was rest assured that God had everything in control like he has always done and so I just had to be calm for my kids being paranoid at that time wasn't going to help anybody so my mom was of the opinion that we actually move Adiri Sola's vaccination to Monday that's the Monday of the same week we're actually supposed to travel because she felt like it won't be nice for her to take a vaccine a day before we travel because she'll be cranky and all of that and i saw reasons with that so we had to call the doctor and the doctor agreed actually since she was ready two months so, so it was actually okay for the doctor to move her appointment to monday and so on monday we were able to take the vaccinations thankfully yes yeah, she was cranky but thankfully it wasn't as bad as i expected so that was out of it then we started watching the news and we found out that it was getting really really bad in the u.s and so by this time restrictions were already being made and it was advisable for everyone to stay at home except you had a tangible reason to be outside at any particular point in time and also by this time schools had already been shut down and i also heard that u.s was going to shut down their airports meanwhile Nigerians were already apprehensive and they were already advising the federal government to close all borders and men I became even more worried. I became so worried because I didn't want to be stuck in the USA like if we all had to stay home you know it would be nice to be together as a family not like daddy champs in Nigeria and the rest of us in the US. So I put a call across to daddy champs and it was like okay I should calm down that we had just less than a week to get back to Nigeria and if the federal government was going to close the borders at least it would give us ample time to do that and all of that. I was like okay yes that's true they can't just wake up one morning and say okay the borders are being shut so let's just see how and by the way this was monday so on tuesday somebody i hardly talked to just buzzed me out of the blues i was like how are you doing how are the kids doing how are you guys coping amid this coronavirus and i told her that we're doing fine but that i was worried because i had to travel with my kids at that time and so she tried to calm me down and then she asked me if i had lysol wipes or lysol um spray i said no if i had sanitizing wipes i said no all I had was baby wipes. I didn't think I was going to be needing it. And so I said no. And so she was like, and so she told me about the urgency of getting these wipes because I was going to travel with kids. So I went on Amazon. I tried to get some. They were all out of stock. I tried to get bleach. Everything was out of stock. I tried to get sanitizing wipes out of stock as well. So I had to dash out, try to check some stores around the house. And all of them were out of stock. Like... I was like so what are we going to do but thankfully our amazing host had um, Clorox bleach so I had to pour Clorox bleach into a pack of baby wipes so that actually brought some sort of relief for me so on Wednesday I was still sleeping when my mom came into the room and said 
Nigeria was closing her border on the 21st of March. I actually thought she was joking. But then again, I stood up and checked my phone and saw that I already got a lot of messages from family members saying, what are you going to do? How are you guys going to do it? I hope you guys are not going to be stopped. Daddy Charles had already sent a message as well. And all he wrote was, don't worry, I'm working on it. Just be calm. And so I was calm. So the next minute that the chance called back and said we should pack our bags that were leaving for 11 p.m. that day. And I was first confused, but I had to just get up because I actually had last minute packing to do because I'd already started packing before. But trust me, last minute packing can be very, very stressful. So as happy as I was, knowing that we're actually going to leave on that day and actually get to Nigeria before the 21st of March, he came with his own fear because it actually meant that we're going to travel through JFK airport at New York. Now, by this time, the airline we're actually supposed to travel with on Friday already sent us a message that they were canceling their flight and we're actually supposed to travel through Philadelphia airport. But now that we already had another ticket with another airline, it meant that we're going to travel through New York. And so I asked him, I said, why New York? He said, that's the only airline that's available to Nigeria. So we actually didn't have a choice. I was scared because, you know, we heard then that New York was actually the bane of this COVID-19. It felt as if just being in New York meant that you were actually going to be infected with coronavirus, but we had to travel. We didn't have a choice. In fact, every Uber driver and truck we called to take us to the airport declined because obviously nobody wants to go to where you know where this um, deadly virus is being mostly talked about you understand and so after so many tries somebody finally agreed to take us to the airport and so we got into the car and we're on our way to the airport and guys I was numb all the way like I just kept thinking that oh my god this is actually me going to New York with my kids like what is going to happen everyone we tried to call declined because yes they didn't want to be affected with coronavirus and this is me going to this same new york with my kids god how am i going to do this like i was really 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 scared in fact i started crying but then again i stopped and decided to just pray i started worshiping god i started prophesying i declared into our situation and i just slept off the next minute we're in New York airport, but I made sure that we all had our gloves and our mask on before we got that. But that didn't work because it was very big for the girls. It won't fit and so it kept on coming off and then girls kept on complaining about how they were finding it very difficult to breathe, you know, with the facial mask. And so I just had to take it off and that meant that I had so much work to do so my eyes were like Tony on your own like I became their guardian angel trying to watch out for them you know trying to make sure that they were not touching anybody trying to make sure that they were not touching stuff trying to make sure that they were calm they were not running all around by the way I was still trying to check in you know I had our hand luggages but thankfully my mom had the baby so it was so stressful you know we had to go to tsa at the same time we had kept on sanitizing our hands we kept on you know it was just so stressful guys so we finally got inside the plane and i became even more worried because i was like i saw everyone and i was like who amongst these people already have coronavirus like we have to be very careful here i was so thankful because they gave us the front row because we had the baby so they gave us a front row and that meant that you know we're like in a space of our own we could control and others were at the back so it was still so scary because i anybody that coughed or sneezed in the plane oh my god i was always so scared like i would just run and quickly use the mask just on my hand to cover my baby's nose or cover the kids nose even when they were asleep i could not sleep because i was on guard we kept on sanitizing in the plane that felt like the longest 
flight ever i couldn't wait to you know leave the plane and just be in a secluded place okay before we got to nigeria they gave us a form from cdc they told us to fill our information they asked us for our contact address um next of kin information your address your phone number and all of that so when we got there they checked our temperature they sanitized our hands they briefed us about coronavirus and then we are allowed to go in so on getting home somebody called me and said they would actually be monitoring us like we have to stay at home for 14 days we have to self-isolate we're not allowed to receive visitors and we're not allowed to um, go out you know because we don't know if any one of us might have actually been affected with coronavirus that was just the truth yes we're in Nigeria but really we don't know if any one of us were already infected with coronavirus we had to wait for 14 days another 14 days of worry started for me because every day i kept on worrying that okay i hope none of us will have any symptoms we continue getting calls from cdc every day like every day you know they asked us to keep checking our temperature every day and sending them the results i kept on doing that we kept on watching out for symptoms but you know as the day went by everyone was fine there was no cough there was no sneeze you know there was there was cough but it wasn't serious just like normal one you know i i but i was still worried i found myself actually you know googling symptoms of coronavirus everything that was on my mind was coronavirus you know i was googling about coronavirus i we kept on you know taking our vitamins we kept on you know trying to up our immunity game and all of that guys that 14 period that 14 days period was really crazy and mind-boggling for me but god saw us through you know 14 days came and we're all still very good and i'm just happy to tell you guys that today as i'm making this video is the 20th day since we arrived lagos nigeria and to the glory of god none of us has exhibited any symptom of covid 19 or any sickness whatsoever i am doing fine my mother is doing well my twins are doing well my baby is doing perfectly well <laughs> i can laugh now guys it wasn't funny like but i give god the glory you know he showed up and showed out as always and i felt it would be nice for me to just come out to you know tell the story to tell this testimony of how you know faithful god is and that for everyone that is looking up to him for one thing or the other keep the faith and god will definitely definitely see you through so that's my story that's my testimony i know it was a long one thank you so much for watching thank you so much for keeping up with me thank you so much for listening to me even though at a point i got tired it's not easy child guys this this youtube life is not easy i know how many times i had to take a break how many times the light went off how many times i had to go out to do one thing or the other chai just to record this video and then you guys will tell me that you watch and you're not subscribed don't do that to me oh. please subscribe to my channel if you have not done that very very important and also press the like button if you enjoyed the story time and do pass it on do share to encourage one person out there and i'll see you in my next video my next video i mean i'll continue with my pregnancy diaries i took a break because of all these covid wala and everything that has been going on but i thank god that's over that's past now so i can continue sharing my pregnancy diaries and i'm also using this opportunity to tell everyone out there to please stay home stay home so that we can all stay safe really i know it's not easy being locked in for a very long time but it's for our own good like that's like the the safest way that we can actually prevent ourselves from getting this deadly diseases so please stay home try to wash your hands you know try to um observe the social distance try to sanitize your hands at all times and just up your immunity and personal hygiene game and i'll see you in my next video. Thank you.